Hello, my name is Peter Varda from Marship. Welcome to part two on this series of presentations we're doing on the story of modern diesel. In this one, we're looking at finished product. What is it you actually put into your, your fuel tank? Now, in part one, we looked at ultra low sulfur distillate, how what we get now is 0.001% sulfur, 10 ppm if you like. We looked at how this ultra, this, this, this fuel is highly stressed. This fuel has been refined to within an inch of its life. It lacks a lubricant. It leaves deposits and it's unstable. If you Google IDID, internal diesel injector deposits, you'll see this is a phenomenon from ultra low sulfur diesel. Nevertheless, it goes to the blend plant. From the blend plant, it'll go to become, for example, maybe marine gas oil, which has to have a lubricant additive. It lacks a lubricant, that distillate does not have any lubricity. So you need to have a lubricity additive put in before you can make the, the marine gas oil. It will also go on to become FAME or uh, EN590 fuel, uh, A2 red diesel, which I'll explain later. This is the fatty acid methyl ester, which is basically made up of animal fats, rapeseed oil, palm oil, soy oil, things like that, McDonald's cooking fat, chippy fat, you name it. FAME has questionable regulation, that's worth remembering. It's hygroscopic. It literally sucks the water out of the atmosphere. Majority of problems that we have with modern day diesel is because of water. It is the precursor to so many of the problems we have. Its byproduct is glycerol, which is basically a wax. Wax in your filters, glycerol is soap. You'll see it coating the filters, stopping the engines. Agriculture in the UK had a big problem with that. It increases system deposits. When you start finding it's harder to start the, the, the vehicle or the, or the engine, you're getting smoke, increased fuel consumption. These are all signs of, of increased deposits on the injectors and, and on the fuel pumps. However, it's not all bad. It does bring lubricity to the party. It brings a lubricant, if you like. Now, when they make the fame, they have to test the lubricity to make sure it's within in specification. And if it's not, they need to put in a lubricant additive. And at that point, it's clear to go off to become to be sold to to become gas oil, A2 red diesel for agriculture, fishing boats, etc. Work boats. Also from here will come the white diesel, the, the EN590 so-called. And that's the stuff that we all put into our vehicles at the forecourt. Now, I'm often asked, is the premium biodiesel on the forecourt worth the extra money? And it's quite a bit extra money that that um, they charge for it. Think about this, the oil majors were asked to make a, a fuel, an environmentally friendly fuel with low sulfur and the fame, the, the renewable resources put in to the diesel. They did that, they did it very well. And they've sold it now on the forecourts, but they know they've made a fuel which is highly unstable, leaves deposits and lacks lubricity. They know all of that. So what they think, well, we're clever marketers and we can make a buck on this. So what they've done is decided they give you the standard stuff, of course, and then they make the premium biodiesel. And in that, they will put a detergent, they will put a dispersant, they will put stability improver, sometimes an additional lubricant, for example, a cetane improver sometimes. And in that, you'll put it into your fancy Range Rover. Now, also from that, 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 that line, if you like, the EN590 line, there's also what's called a rebated fuel. And in that, we put in a red dye and that will go off into your agriculture, um, fishing boat or whatever. Now, engines are so highly technical these days, common rail engines, the fuel pressures are incredible now compared to what they used to be. Now, if I had a tractor worth two or 300,000 pounds, I would be putting in certainly EN590 rebated diesel. It's a lot more regulated than A2. Like all industries, you've got to be careful with this. There's always the dodgy supplier out there. Somebody's trying to make a buck. Now, if they were to get fuel before they put the lubricity put in, for example, and then selling it on the black market, that's when your problems are going to start. 
also on top of that no one is making money out of fuel the margins are very very low on fuel and so and additives are a cost they need to put the additives in they need to put that lubricant in but if they're going to put the absolute bare minimum so in our view there has never been a greater need for additives than there is now now we in our in in Marship, we have our own product it's uk manufactured diesel aid ldb it has a lubricant a detergent and a biocide in there the lubricity it, it, we put a lubricity in there to to counter the the lack of lubricant from the distillate we put a detergent dispersant and stability to try and eke out a little bit more time um we before the oxidation um degradation starts in the fuel we also put in a biocide because of all that water it collects on the bottom of the tank. We put a biocide in there to try and try and kill the uh, diesel bug. It's what we would call, for example, the premium diesel for um, you know, industry, if you like. Now, who is Marship? Marship specialise in fuel management systems. We remove water from fuel tanks. And water is the single greatest contaminant in diesel. I've been involved in, in ships for 40 years, um, diesel particularly, and, and problems with fuel. Now, a lot of people want to run around and, and polish fuel. It's not always necessary. What is necessary is you have to remove the water. Now, in 2020, we were awarded a patent, a patent for our own fuel separator. We looked at the market. We realized there was nothing on the market that was going to just use do that dedicated removal of water without any consumable filters, blocking filters, etc. So we invented our own and so we have a, a patent now. This is the heart of what we call the diesel dipper, the diesel drake and the diesel duck. No presentation on modern diesel would be complete without a mention of fuel additives. Now, most people start glazing over when you talk about fuel additives because they've had such a bad name for decades now. Uh, snake oil is the first thing that comes to mind. But there has never been a greater need for fuel additives than now because of all the water from the fatty acid methyl ester it's hygroscopic it sucks the water in there's a lot more water about hence the reason we make our products to remove that water but if you've had water you could you could or will most likely get diesel bug these are pictures of diesel bug that bottom left hand corner there was from a fishing boat owner in the north sea he broke down had to be pulled in by the rnli the, the lifeboat service our diesel AB is a broad, broad spectrum biocide, and we have engine manufacturer approval for that. We also manufacture something called diesel aid LDB. It has a lubricity, a detergent, and a little bit of biocide to keep the diesel bug at bay, if you like. The detergent is very important, as I was talking about earlier, about the internal diesel injector deposits, stops the deposits, stops the smoking, stops the increase in fuel consumption, and you'll soon notice it if you're, if you're finding it more difficult to start the engine. I hope this presentation was um, useful to you, and if it was, please press like and subscribe if you'd like to see the other ones as they come along. Thanks a lot.